Um, okay, so my story is about how I, as a scientist, discovered my creative side and brought together a team of people to explore and to develop new technology. And I started out in the beginning by turning my garage into a clean room. And I went to the university in Cambridge and kind of borrowed or stole bits of stuff from the uh, dumpsters or skips where they thrown them all out. And in my garage, I figured out how to print transistors. And I was really pleased with the science that I'd created. But I quickly realized that what I needed to do was to create some products. And the, so the first lesson I learned, really, is that science doesn't pay. <laughs> I, needed to, I needed to make some money. But what I did discover was a real passion and love for printing. And I think print is an amazing process. And what print can allow us to do is um, it can make things in high volume in anywhere in the world. But what I also discovered, that many of the processes in printing and also what's known as converting, were very similar or the same processes that you would see in a silicon fab to make transistors. The only difference is everything was much faster. Things were running at hundreds of meters a minute or tens of, tens of kilometers um, an hour. I also, um, since I was a child, I've had a fascination for electronics, and I'm really embarrassed to say that my bedroom was riddled with wires under the carpet <laughs> and, and in the walls, all connecting little speakers and switches and microphones and things together. Um, but more recently, what I've discovered is the processor that was used in the Apple II is now available in volume for less than 10 cents. So what I became really sort of fascinated with was what if we could combine the pervasiveness of print with the power of electronics. What I wanted to do was to use printing to print conductive tracks to make a sort of a friendly user interface, stick a little chip on, write some software, and make print interactive. So I went and told some printers that this is what I wanted to do on their printing presses, and they told me I was crazy and it wasn't possible. So I kind of got 10 credit cards and loans and got loads of money together, and I bought myself this printing press. <laughs> It was a huge, it's like five meters long, and I covered myself and the floor with ink, and I just made a total mess. But I learned how to print. <laughs> okay, and then there was, um, a company came along to me and they said, can you make a piece of, um, a carton do something more? And then so the engineer inside me thought, I'll put a little light on the inside so when you open the box you can see. And a student working for me looked at that and said, that's useless, why would anybody want that? And so what she created was a cat that was a circuit that had eyes. And when you open the carton, the cat's eyes lit up. And to my surprise, everybody I showed really, really loved it. And what I learned from that was the value of creativity and the value of design. So the first person that I hired to join me on my journey was a graphic designer. Actually, I'm skipping these. Sorry, they weren't supposed to be there. Okay, what I also quick re quickly realized was that me and my printing press wouldn't be able to, to print all the things that, that we wanted to do, and I, I didn't really have the skills to do that. So the next person I got to join my team was someone from the print and packaging industry, because it's really important that everything that I create has to be able to be manufactured anywhere in the world on any sort of industrial type of printing press anywhere in the world. Okay, so print, this is going to be really loud. <laughs> Sorry, that was one of the things in my bag of tricks was my speaker that makes these noises. <laughs> um, print is amazing because you can print really fine lines and you can print over really large areas at the same time. And what we created using litho print um, is this DJ poster, where when you touch it, you get different sound effects on the poster. But again, this is created on a printing press in a factory that prints many of the posters that are in the stores in the UK. Maybe you can turn the volume down now. Um, and also, I'll just show you some other print, is that we can print really fine lines on very thin materials. So we can print capacitive touch pads that are transparent or opaque, and we can stick those on anything. Also, what we've created is a pharmaceutical carton that knows when you've taken the tablets because some conductive tracks break, it reminds you when to take your medication, but when it goes back to the pharmacy, it tells the doctor when you took your medication, so there's kind of some sort of compliance thing. 
Um, everyone knows that no tissue carton is complete without a little piano on the side, and so we put this piano on the side of a tissue carton. It has colour-coded keys, so anyone who can read, um, and because there's some lyrics on the side as well, and is not colour-blind, can play the piano. We wanted to, to look more at how we could connect pieces of print to the internet, so we wrote an app for a phone, and when you touch this postcard, it makes things activate on the phone, so it could be web links on a phone. And the technology in that postcard would cost less than 50 cents. So the next people that I added to my team were electronic engineers, embedded software engineers, and um, a developer who could write apps for pieces of print. Okay, I'm going to try a live demo, and I'm really worried it's going to go wrong. But <laughs> we'll see. So this poster is Bluetooth connected to my iPad that's over there. <laughs> and I can choose whatever. <laughs> so anyone can have a jazz jam from a poster. <laughs> That was just in case it didn't work. <laughs> um, so also what we've created is a poster that's all about cake. And I really love cake. And this poster talks to you. And it has four multiple choice questions that you can touch. And it discovers your perfect cake. But at the end, it doesn't tell you your cake. It uploads a picture, the name, and description of the cake to Facebook and Twitter. And maybe we could also do something like print a Facebook-like um, button you know, in the real world. And it's all about exploring how we connect the physical and the digital together. Um, most of what I've done is all, is all about sound and touch. But what I also want to do is explore something different. And we're working with really small LEDs that are so thin you can't feel them when they're on paper, that are so small I can't see them when they're on the end of the tweezers, but they're so bright that they hurt your eyes when they come up and we're making light come out of paper. And so what I want to do is to get LEDs and microcontrollers into stickers that can stick onto any piece of print anywhere and make anything interactive. So my story really is about how I discovered my creative side and my belief that anything can be made to be seamlessly interactive. And my innovation is all about in integrating existing technologies and people with different skills and also having a lot of fun. Thank you.